I think this morning we can make some more noise. Can we do that? <laughs> Man, I tell you, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I want to let know, know my my friend and uh, who I I love unconditionally, uh, Casimiro Rodriguez, and uh, that today we could say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Este es el día que ha hecho el Señor para cada una de nuestra vida. I, I got to throw a little bit of that Spanish in there today. <laughs> what a blessing to see so many faces and a blessing to just to be here, to know that we are better together. There's a powerful uh, scripture that I, I was praying and I was saying uh, back home and I was saying, Lord, man, I remember the book of Nehemiah, and one of my special verses is that ver verse 20 from chapter 2. The God of heaven himself will help us to succeed. Therefore, we will arise. Everyone say with me, we will arise. We will arise, we will arise and build. Can we say that? We will trust his word and believe in the sovereign Lord who always keeps his promises. Let us pray. Our Father, we, we thank you for this day, for the hopes and dreams that are ours as we propose to build this facility in the heart of our community. We thank you for your faithful love for us that never ends, your mercy which never ceases. They are new every morning. Can you say with me, they are new every morning? And would you say with me, great is thy faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for all our friends and distinguished guests, all our government officials who are with us today to grace this occasion. We ask that you continue to shower your blessings upon our donors and supporters who have generously contributed to this project. Let us not forget the pillars. The pillars and the trailblazers of this community who left their footprints to inspire others to follow their hearts. We thank you for guiding your servant, Casimiro Rodriguez, and the board of directors that entrusted the, the process and his vision for the people of our community at large and all the organizations that will come and collaborate together for the same common cause and for the embedment of our community. Lord, we recognize that we are nothing and that nothing can be accomplished, your help and guidance. And so we ask you to bless and lead us today. Help us, Lord. Everyone say with me, help us, Lord. To not yield to temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is thy kingdom, the power and the, the glory forever and ever and ever. Everyone say amen, 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 amen. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the members of the Gabriel A. Rodriguez American Legion Post 1928. Present color. remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Buffalo's very own Melinda Caples Rowe.
but so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose but stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle Please join us as we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Please welcome to the podium, Communications Chair of Hispanic Heritage Council, Dinora Santos. Buenos dias, damas y caballeros. Gracias por compartir con nosotros este momento histórico en nuestra comunidad. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this historical moment in our community. I want to start off uh, by thanking a few people of the many that have helped us set this event here today. Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, L Leslie Colon for the wonderful desserts, Brenda Mansour, Kevin's Catering for the wonderful coffee and helping with the food, Sabores de Mi Tierra for the delicious empanadillas, Lowe's Department Store, Home Depot, Goya Foods Group from Great Lakes, Rodriguez Construction Group, Gabriel Rodriguez, American Legion Post 1928, and all of the wonderful volunteers. Please join me in welcoming President and Founder of the Hispanic Heritage Council of Western New York, Casimiro Rodriguez. You can have a seat. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the media for being here. These are the stories that are important to all communities. So thank you very much to all the media. WICU, CBS Puerto Rico, I believe, is in the house, and all local media. Thank you very much. You know, there, there's a saying that really strikes a nerve in me, and it's a quote from Marv Levy. Marv Levy, the former Buffalo Bill's coach, and it goes like this. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? <laughs> Governor, thank you. Thank you very much for all you do for our community, for Western New York, or across the state, down the state, and New York State. 
and to all the elected officials that are very well represented here today, thank you very much. We couldn't and we can't do this alone. Today marks a major milestone in our community in so many ways. Nationally and locally, today, September 15th, we launch Hispanic Heritage Month. Thirteen years ago, we officially launched Hispanic Heritage Month at the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. And that set the direction of this organization. It began through an experience being on the Erie County Cultural Resource Board. County Executive Mark Policars, you're the current County Executive, thank you very much for giving me that opportunity and all the intelligence that I was able to gather as being part of that member of that board. And that's why we've developed the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute or the, the Hispanic Heritage Council. We needed, we needed something to be the driver so that not only our community but Western New York appreciates Hispanic heritage, history, and culture. And while we do that, we preserve the history, the rich history of our Hispanic community here in Western New York. We've been part of the landscape of Western New York for over a century. And we really are very grateful. The Reverend said it very well that today we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. And I believe that. I shadowed many of those. I learned a lot, more than what you can learn in college or at any school. And my grandson is here today, my youngest grandson, Gregorio. Stand up for a minute, Gregory. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, and tomorrow, you and many others in your age will stand on our shoulders. <laughs> the theme of this year's Hispanic Heritage Month is Latinos driving prosperity, power, and progress in America. It's unfolding in our very own eyes today where we can welcome our New York State Governor, Kathy Hochul. <laughs> our local elected officials, this beloved community, our friends, our neighbors, our partners, all our families, from all four corners of this city and this state, from the bottom of our hearts, and on behalf of this board, dedicated board, which is a volunteer board of directors, we thank you for being here in this special day. From all of us, thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Gabriel A. Rodriguez American Legion Post, I'm very proud of you men, and I thank you for your service. The Commander John Sanabria, past Commander Benigno Rodriguez, and there's another past Commander here, Jose Rivera. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I want to also give my special thanks. Governor, you got an exceptional team leading you here in the city of Buffalo. And we thank you for that team. Bonnie Lockwood, Karen Mahoney, and Mo, thank you very much in your entire office. Thank you very much for all you do for our area and the entire regional staff. 
to the Hispanic Heritage Council of Western New York Board of Directors. I've said it many times in our meetings, this is serious. And it's gonna take each and every one of us to make it happen. Thank you very much for your dedication, your commitment. I know I'm a little stickler sometimes, but we're gonna do it together. To our HHCI Communications Chair, Denora Eni Santos, thank you very much for all you do. You're a pillar and a cornerstone to this project, and I appreciate Thomas. Are you here, Thomas? Thank you very much, Thomas, for lending her, not only to this organization, <laughs> I gotta say this, lending her, not only to this organization, but to this community. Thank you very much. To my family, a source of strength. My wife, Betsaida Rodriguez. Stand up, Betsy. <laughs> my entire family, a source of strength. In those moments, I know I missed a lot of birthday parties, a few graduations, a lot of community gatherings, but we're doing it for the right reason. Our consultants, Luis Rodriguez Construction. Luis, where are you, Luis? Let me tell you, this construction company, I wouldn't pick anyone else. And they're no relation, no relation. <laughs> but we like transparency, honesty, integrity, and in everything that we do. Thank you very much, Luis. Manny Rivera from La Bella Associates. Manny Rivera, thank you very much for your architectural experience, your expertise in building one of the most beautiful landmarks in New York State. Diana Seahawk from Upper Edge Consulting. You've written, written a lot of grants and I know you're gonna write some more. Thank you very much. There's so many to thank the local foundations, government that's been hand in hand with us from day one. I'd like to thank you, our mayor, our county executive, our senators, our assemblymen, our councilmen, everyone's been engaged. Thank you very much. From the bottom of my heart, we can't do it alone. And from New York State, Nancy Hernandez, from our controller's office. Thank you very much for being here. There are many foundations that have come together to help us, and I'm not going to mention them all, but there's a list of all the donors right to the back wall there. Take a moment, and if you see those folks, thank them, because their help and support has been astronomical. Mo, on February 25th, 2019, I walked in your office. I have to say this because this is part of the history. Didn't know what, was I, what the answers were and what I was facing. But one of the things I did know is that I had a commitment to see a project and present it to you at Empire State Development. And I remember your exact words, Kaz, you got a long way to go. But one of the things I asked Mo, I said, Mo, what do I need to do? You know, I come from the manufacturing, the corporate world. I know how to launch engines, transmissions all over the world. But as far as to deal with government and try to present a project that's the crown jewel of our community, you know, I'm just getting started. He says, Kaz, you need to do this, 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 and that. I took that to heart. I rolled up my sleeve, and we're here today, Mo. Thank you very much. You know, I, I have to say that uh, this project 
is one that's been in our hearts for many years. In 2019, we announced it. We didn't have a penny. We didn't own no land. Our budget, you know, our account was probably less than 100,000. But the pandemic hit in 2020 and it stalled everything. Let me say that that year we took advantage of the opportunity. We said everybody's down, nobody's giving any money, but what we're going to do with the funds that we started getting from our first foundation, which is Osai, Oshai Foundation, okay, we started putting our business plan together, we started buying the land, we started doing our environmental studies. We didn't own no properties at that time when we did our environmental studies. Our board said, well, you gotta be nuts, we don't own that. I said, this is gonna happen, we're gonna do that. We did our environmental studies, we did all of that. 2020 went through, 2021, things started opening up and that's when our capital campaign started getting into gear. And government stepped up to the plate Everyone stepped up to the plate because they knew that this project is very important, not only to this organization, but to this community. This project represents the arts and cultural with many of our partners in the community, but it's also, we envision this project to be the economic engine of this area, the gateway to America. And we're very proud of that. It's gonna be a tourist attraction not only locally, but across the state in Canada. The last census, there are close to a million Hispanics in Canada. And we're starting to develop relationships with those folks because it's very important. But I just give you a little bit of history there. And, and at this time, I'd like to present. But before I present our governor, I wanna say a few words. Governor, we're from the same area, Lackawanna, New York. I was born there, raised there. Our dads worked at the same place, Bethlehem Steel. We came from humble beginnings. My parents didn't have much education, limited English, but they had a heart of determination to succeed. And I'm a product of that. You're a product of your parents. I've heard you across the state and in even Puerto Rico talk about your humble beginnings in Lackawanna, New York. I know you're proud, I'm very proud. And I'd like to, at this moment, present our governor of New York State, Kathy Hochul. Please rise. Thank you. you. You gotta love a guy who quotes the great philosopher Marv Levy <laughs> about why we are so happy to be here. So I open with a warm buenos dias to all of you. Uh, this is the place we all want to be, Marv. This is the place. There's no place else. And this is a testament to the resilient spirit of a group of committed individuals who set out to change the world. And indeed, it is always a small group that starts out with that idea, that kernel of belief that something better can happen. Kaz Rodriguez, what you did in creating the Hispanic Heritage Council, and I praise all the members who've been working so hard in the trenches at a time when people probably didn't believe this could happen. But you never gave up faith. You followed the courage of your convictions, and you made us all so proud. This is a proud community. It's a community I know very well. And in fact, you mentioned Lackawanna. Yesterday, late in the day, I was as far away from this place as you can get in our state, out in Long Island, New York, preparing for the hurricanes, okay? Talking to our National Guard, making sure they're ready to anticipate the flooding damage that we think could happen imminently. But I said, that hurricane's got away because I'm getting back home. 
because I am not going to tell Kaz I got stuck on Long Island and did not make this event. So I came back when I arrived. I haven't been home in a little while. I saw my husband after dinner that he made. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Wegmans, actually, for making dinner. <laughs> he says, how about an ice cream cone? Never say no to ice cream. Where do we go? Fran Seals. Fran Seals. So as we drove down Ridge Road last night in search of the perfect ice cream, a place my parents used to go and they lived in the trailer park behind it, we drove past the little church that had been the gathering place of the Puerto Rican community when I was a child. And I pointed out that building literally last night to Bill and I said, that's the place where my parents, who just had emerged from a trailer park, had a small home in Hamburg, had the beginnings of six of our kids, decide they're going to team up with this social activist priest and do something for the children of the migrant farm workers, the Puerto Rican children, who had no activities in the summertime when their parents were out in the fields out in Eden, or perhaps parents working at the steel plant. So my parents, with big family, their own struggles, we used to get our clothes at the used clothing stores. We didn't have a lot, but they always told us there's people of less. There's always someone who has less. And that's the spirit of giving that I was raised in. And my mother, very pregnant with, I think, number five or six, <laughs> loaded us all up in a beat-up station wagon and said she's going to start a summer camp for those children who need help in Lackawanna. So I was sixth grade. She put me in charge of the kindergarten class. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, who was in first grade, was my assistant. <laughs> I hope those kids are okay. <laughs> but I had to learn language. We taught them music and dance in this really rundown basement. My mother was going around to local floors, scraping, saying, are there any little parts of floral arrangements that we could bring with us so the kids could like glue something on a piece of paper and make it look pretty? She brought in volunteers from St. Peter Paul Church to help teach singing and dance. And we spent our summers like that made a little difference, I suppose. But it seared in me the knowledge of just how a few people with a vision to better the lives of others can realize that dream. That is what you did, Kaz. That's why we're here. That's why we're here to demonstrate this is a community that matters. Matters. It has been overlooked, taken for granted for far too long. And as the Puerto Rican community gravitated to the west side of Buffalo, other countries, others, now Puerto Rico is part of our country, I don't mean other countries, Puerto Rico is America, but other countries followed. And we became the melting pot of the world. I'm so proud of that. People have always felt welcome. They didn't know the same language, but we know the next generation will. And when they're educating our great public schools, they're going to get those good paying jobs. That is the American dream right outside these doors. That's what I love about this community. I've seen that, that transformation from being one identity to many, multicultural, so diverse, so fascinating. And that's what we're here to celebrate, a gathering place for people from many different backgrounds who want to learn about the great contributions of the Hispanic community, but also not just learn about the past, but celebrate with theater and dance and, and broadcasting to the world the stories of what people are doing. So your grandson will know the proud story of the struggles, but have an eye toward the future and know that it'll be better because of those who came before and built a place to celebrate this great story. This neighborhood has been transformed. It is much safer. I will give credit to someone as well who was the United States attorney, my husband. When he took down the gangs that were terrorizing the neighborhoods, people began to come out. We rode our bikes through here. We still do. Up and down these streets at a time when before people had been too afraid to come out of their houses because of the shooting in the streets. I see baby carriages being pushed. I see people from all over the world celebrating different food and talking to each other. This is America right here. This is the nation, the melting pot, 
that has always been so welcoming to others. And I thank you and the members of the Heritage Council, Hispanic Heritage Council, not just for this building, but what you're doing right here, right now, by making those in search of the American dream feel welcome. Right here, there's a place for you. And we look forward to making sure that you will join us in living your dreams, because we are all better for it. So to you and to all the incredible elected officials who are here, and I want to give them some shout outs here because I'm, these are my friends. These are my friends. I want to thank people like our county executive, Mark Polencars, for what he has done. I thank you for courage that will be rewarded because people are going to make sure that you continue as our county executive because we have no choice. You are our leader. You are the leader of this community, Mark Polencars. Our mayor, who has embraced the diversity of this community, this incredible community, lifting it up, but especially bringing together a wounded community on the east side of Buffalo after what they went through. That'll always be part of your legacy. Let's give a round of applause for Mayor Brown. I have incredible partners from this community in Albany, and they're an important part of why we pieced together over $12 million for this $30 million project. It was just a year ago when I got asked, rather assertively, by, by Tim Kennedy and Sean Ryan and, and John Rivera, I still remember, Governor, can you find another $5 million? I mean, they, they added money from the Assembly, from the Senate. I thank them for that. NIPA, other organizations, ESD, all political companies. There's just one more $5 million you can find, like looking at my pockets. Uh, <laughs> I know they're going to pick my pockets anyhow. I might as well just say yes. Uh, so thank you for your advocacy for the funding for this to all of you. And to the other electeds who are here, I know Willie Rosas has traveled here from Dunkirk. Thank you for your many years of leadership here. Uh, <laughs> Council Member David Rivera. David Rivera, we've worked to, so closely together. You and uh, your Jonathan have really shared what, talked about what public service is all about. You've instilled in that in your son. And that is also part of why you're such a great friend, a great man, because you brought on the next generation of service. So thank you, David. Thank you, John, for your family's contributions. <laughs> and I brought someone who I said, this is your new adopted home. Come here a lot because they'll love you. That is New York Secretary of State, Robert Rodriguez. And I want to thank him. Thank you. So you'll hear from him momentarily. We've done a lot together. We served Puerto Rico in the aftermath of hurricanes and earthquakes. We went down there. We came to this community, talked about our efforts, making sure that people knew that we are for this community and always will be. So with that, I say this is a great day. This is a new beginning, and this is the culmination of a committed group of individuals who made the magic happen right here and right now, and you saw that great victory. So this is your Super Bowl, Kaz. This is your Super Bowl. Let's, let's cut the ribbon. At this time, we ask you to remain seated as we invite the program to the groundbreaking ceremony. Our program will begin, will continue after the groundbreaking.
please welcome to the podium Secretary of State Robert Rodriguez. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, familia. It's great to be here with you on this really, truly special occasion. I say familia because as the governor mentioned, she said, visit Buffalo often and they will embrace you. And Kaz and the mayor and the team here and the Latino community in particular, Mayor Rosas has embraced me. And I, I just wanna say thank you for that. But more importantly, I wanna thank the governor. And I think what you heard a little bit is her commitment to making sure that Western New York, that Buffalo, that communities across our state are recognized. And that's what this place represents. It represents the recognition of a community. It represents the recognition and celebration of a legacy, of service, of work, of celebration, of culture. All of those things that make our community shine, that don't happen on day one, that oftentimes come through struggle. And what we have seen here is that this community, through its struggle and its perseverance, have established a home for Latinos here in Western New York. And now we are just taking that home and recognizing it as a, uh, recognizing this place through this institution and through this landmark. So it really is exciting to be here on this day, but this would not happen without partners in government and really all of our partners in government, including Assemblymember Rivera. I wanna mention Empire State Development. You've heard about Mo and in absentia, we have Hope Knight who believes in this vision and shepherding it since 2019. And while I was here with the mayor walking down Avenida San Juan this past summer, uh, we saw the presence, the, the strength, the, the vibrancy of the Puerto Rican and Latino community here in Buffalo. And following that up last April, when Kaz brought me to this site, I earned my pin then. <laughs> and said, we're just a little bit short of where we need to be. Can you help? Thankfully, my team and my partners, including in the legislature, we're able to come through and make that happen. This is your money. These are your tax dollars coming to work to recognize a significant investment in the west side of Buffalo. So I just wanna say this is an important moment. Not just the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month, which is appropriate, but it's also a moment for us to recognize the contributions of Latino culture in Western New York, the vibrancy and diversity within that tent, uh, in this opportunity for this center, this location, to promote dialogue around our culture, to fill gaps amongst communities that exist, to create a sense of inclusivity for generations to come, to make sure that the diversity that we know makes us stronger exists right here uh, in, the, in, in the center as a beacon for all of Western New York and now Canada, right Kaz? So my brothers and sisters, I just wanna say thank you for the opportunity to be here to help support this vision, to give us the opportunity to create a place that we know will continue for generations and be an anchor for the Latino community. Uh, and while you know I've been here before, the good thing about groundbreakings is that you are pretty much assured to come back again when we cut the ribbon. So, it's been great. We've been with you since 2019, so we'll be with you till the end of construction. Um, and with that, before we go, I just wanted to take this opportunity to make a special presentation of a proclamation to somebody who has been exceptional and extraordinary in creating a vision for what could be possible for the Latino community here in Buffalo. You heard a little bit about his determination and perseverance in bringing together all of the people and the partners, both public and private, to create this institution, this moment. But it's not often that we give them the recognition, 
that they deserve. So this gives me an opportunity to make a presentation of a proclamation to Casimiro Rodriguez for all of his work <laughs> in bringing this vision and this place to bear for the Latino community on this month, the first day of Hispanic Heritage Month. So again, congratulations on this big milestone. I look forward to the ribbon cutting and now I have the opportunity to uh, introduce uh, my colleague uh, and one of the most dynamic leaders here in, uh, in, in Western New York and the senior senator, I could say, senior senator, uh, Tim Kennedy. Thank you for being with us. I turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. So many of you have heard me speak in Spanish, and uh, so many of you have seen me butcher my words in Spanish. So I'm going to keep it brief in Spanish today with a simple buenos dias. It's so wonderful to be here today uh, with all my partners in government from every level of government that are here, uh, starting with our great governor who never forgets about where she comes from. And you heard that articulated here today. Uh, my colleagues in government, from state government, uh, from city government, from county government, uh, all across Western New York, partners from the NAACP like Pastor Mark Blue and uh, J.C. Seneca from the Seneca Nation of Indians, a counselor there. This is a true partnership, but don't take my word for it. Simply ask Kaz Rodriguez. He'll tell you. This was a partnership with so many folks in the community that came together that said, this is the right time to do the right thing by the community, driven by Kaz Rodriguez and the Hispanic Heritage Council. Uh, this is a project of generational proportions, and I'm proud to have played a role in this partnership. Uh, but everyone needs a great leader, and Kaz, your leadership transcends uh, everything that we know about you and your personality, your character, your integrity. Thank you so much for what you've done for our community, what you continue to do, and congratulations on this wonderful occasion here today. We owe a, a great debt to you personally. Let's hear it again for Kaz Rodriguez. But today's investment uh, isn't just a commitment to sustaining our community, it transforms it. $30 million funding, a comprehensive three-story, 37,000 square foot space that'll preserve and promote Hispanic culture and history right here in the heart of Buffalo's West Side. A real game changer. And it's a project that takes the work of many, as has been mentioned. And, you know, I mentioned Kaz and his leadership. He makes it all about everybody else. He pulls people in an inclusive project. And that's exactly what this new cultural institute is going to do. It's here that a gallery will feature work and speaker series and community panels will take center stage. I spoke about collaboration and this space will be built on that collaboration with a new theater that will be available local schools and churches and block clubs and organizations throughout New York, throughout the greater region and into Canada, a space that was built by the people for the people. And I couldn't be more proud to join the governor and all of my colleagues, and I see Majority Leader People Stokes here today. Again, a shout out to the assembly leadership from the Majority Leader and Jonathan Rivera, uh, my colleague in the Senate, Senator Sean Ryan, who you'll hear from in a moment, working with the governor, again, the county executive, Mayor Brown, Mayor Rosas, the Common Council, the county legislature, all levels of government to inspire this work driven by the community. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be a part of it, and congratulations on this historic occasion. It's now my great honor to introduce my colleague, Senator Sean Ryan. Uh, continue uh, to grow. Uh, 
question of lack of I have to take a moment to say, you know, Margaret Sullivan, the former editor of the Buffalo News, who's also a proud daughter of Lackawanna, once said that Lackawanna outpunches its weight. And I think <laughs> County Executive Polencar, Governor Hochul, myself, and Kaz would say that's a true statement. So thank you, Kaz, for outpunching your weight. So what an exciting day. Like, we know the vibrancy of the Western New York Hispanic community. It's a diverse Hispanic community, but it's a huge part of what makes Buffalo the city we know and love. The Culture Institute, it's going to be a celebration of culture. It's unprecedented in upstate New York, and it is long overdue. Kaz and the Hispanic Heritage Council, they've been great advocates for the Hispanic community. You know, whether we're starting back with the Hispanic War Memorial down on the waterfront, we're continuing to today. Uh, Kaz came to see me on Grant Street, told me uh, about his vision, and then Kaz came to see me again in Grant Street and told me about his vision. And then once in Albany, someone said, there's someone here to see you. I said, who? They said, it's Kaz. I said, oh, he found me in Albany. But it is, it is his persistence in trying to achieve his vision that made all this possible. So Kaz, thank you for your vision, thank you for your persistence, and thank you for recognizing that we could get here today. So the whole community came together for this transformational project. Uh, I want to thank Governor Hochul for investing in this amazing uh, project. Um, you know, it wasn't long ago that people were skeptical about the changing demographics of the West Side. You started hearing the whisper as a fear. Who are the new people moving into the West Side? They look different. They speak a different language. Sort of, what should we do about it? But people quickly realized what we all know in this room. Diversity is our strength. I'll say it again. I got to say it again. Diversity is our strength, and that's why we're all here today. But unfortunately, you're hearing the whispers again. New people are coming to our community, speak a different language. They look different. Is this something we should fear? But I know our community is going to respond not with fear, but they're going to respond with love. And I'm confident in that our community. People are coming here from other countries to escape persecution, to escape dangerous situations. But most of what they want is a better life for them and their families. Isn't that what everybody who comes to the West Side wants? A better life for them and their family? You know that unfear, unfounded fear gets replaced by acceptance, and eventually what you're seeing here today is celebration. So thanks, Kaz, for bringing this day here. And I'm confident that as we break ground on this building that's going to be a tribute to Hispanic culture, that this center is going to help Western New York more fully embrace the diversity that makes us so unique, that makes us so strong, and makes us so special. It's my pleasure to bring up the next speaker, who is also my successor uh, in, in the assembly. Um, I can't be more proud of John Rivera. John recognized the strength and the possibility in this program early on, and he recognized it, of course, because he's a product of the West Side. You can't get more West Side than John Rivera. John helped to prime the pump. John helped to prime the pump of state money, and that pump kept moving and it started flowing. The Senate got on board, the governor got on board, the whole New York State got on board uh, because of John's leadership in Albany. So it's my pleasure to bring up Assembly Member John Rivera. Kind, kind words. Thank you, Senator. Uh, it's an amazing day uh, for a lot of reasons. And uh, 
you know, in government, you get frustrated. Long take. Uh, clearly, this was not that frustrating. Happening quick. Uh, you know, it seems like a tough haul. Uh, but to go from 2019, like you said, where there wasn't much there, the land wasn't ours, the wasn't there. We stand today in a relatively short period of time, especially when you consider the yeah. there. Uh, it's an amazing test. The the effort, the perseverance, the the thing that makes us us uh, as Latinos. Uh, for those of you that don't speak Spanish, I'll give you the Spanish word of the day, which is one of my favorite Spanish words in history. Uh, I like the word boldness, but in Spanish, I like the way it sounds, which is de nuevo. Everybody say it with me, de nuevo. De nuevo. Uh, you know, there's a boldness to this group that have put this together from top to bottom, uh, and it's an amazing thing. It's amazing, obviously, as a member of the New York State Assembly that's been able to be helpful to this process uh, and see it come into fruition, but it's obviously more all that much more impactful for me as, as a Latino that's called Buffalo, home is old life. Uh, in fact, the place where we're standing is not that far from where David and Esther Rivera brought me home when I was born. We, our first home, well, my first home was on Busty Avenue, just a few blocks from here, uh, full circle. I currently still live on Busty Avenue, right here on the <laughs> west side. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. Uh, I, I do want to say thank you to a few folks. I obviously want to say thank you to Senator Ryan uh, and Senator Kennedy. You know, in Albany, it's, in, in, it's, it's a fascinating uh, I could use a lot of words, but I'll stick with fascinating. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's to be confused, uh, but the Western New York delegation led by our amazing majority leader. Let's give it first up to Majority Leader Christopher People Stokes. Uh, it, our, 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 our delegation is amazing because we really move in compassion. We are constantly aware of the things that are happening here. Just this week, we've met from big regional entities, from Kaleida Health to Feed More to countless other groups. Uh, we've toured facilities, we've met with people, and we want to be there for them. So it's an amazing team to be a part of, so I want to thank them. Uh, there's two, well, there's three uh, members that I want to thank specifically. Uh, one is our speaker, Carl Hasty. So, to, so everyone to get a bit of history, let's give it a applause, <laughs> Speaker Hasty. You know, I walked right where we're standing a few years ago uh, with Speaker Hasty and uh, told him about what we wanted to do here, and the amount, the, just the generosity that he demonstrated. Uh, and the support for me and the support for you and truthfully in a community that he had certainly been to many times but f far far away from where he calls home in the Bronx uh, he was able to not just support us in this effort uh, but by the end of it the assembly had provided over five million dollars towards this project uh, and it's and it's it, although I could say that I sort of was part of it all you know I'd have to say that it really really wasn't just me it was really really a group effort uh, since then, we've been able to secure financing for countless other organizations on the west side, and we're going to continue to do it. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Speaker Hasty for all his effort in it. I also want to thank Assemblymember Davila, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us today. Uh, she, it, 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 it's funny because you know, at, at the time she was the chair of our uh, Puerto Rican Hispanic task force, task force of the State Assembly and Senate. and. A person has never lived in Buffalo, certainly, but certainly had been to Buffalo a few times. Uh, also has Kaz stories, just like the rest of us, of his persistence. Uh, and really, you know, to her credit and uh, to my eternal gratitude, took me under her wing a bit and showed me, no, this is how it's going to work. This is how we're going to do it. These are the conversations we need to have. Uh, and uh, she's just been an amazing be here today. Unfortunately, it was a, an illness in the family, but she was planning on making the long haul from Brooklyn to Buffalo today to be with us for this. That's how excited she was. But if it wasn't for her advocacy, uh, this we really wouldn't have been able to make it. Uh, current Secretary of State Robert Rodriguez, who there's over two senators between the Assembly and Senate, and you know it's easy to sort of fall, you know, kind of in the mix of it all of you know, trying to get bills passed and trying to get this done and advocating for this in the budget. 
Rarely do members of that have high seniority come to freshmen like me that's clearly lost even in getting to the bathroom, uh, <laughs> let alone trying to get work done. Uh, Robert was for, for Western New York, so I want to thank uh, you. Know, with this, you know, in every Latino that calls Buffalo home is a constant and complex duality. On one hand, full ever-present desire to strengthen our roots and exist in our identity, all the while expanding and growing in a land that we give our best to plant new trees in. To many of us, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, uh, Cuba, Venezuela, countless other countries, it's far, far, far away from us, not just in distance, but in time. And if it's not for the work we do in like this, in organizations like this, then we will lose our, not just our past, but we will lose our future because our children are not going to know the beauty that we come from. I stand here today and I think about how many times I've driven down Niagara Street and how many times my father's driven down Niagara Street and how many times my grandfather drove down Niagara Street. And I think about the countless Latinos who followed a North Star to a region, took a chance on this foreign land and sought the simplest of American dreams. All those people drove down Niagara Street. This cultural center stands to be the beginning of a new chapter in that American dream for the Western New York Latino community entirely. It will serve as a space where our history will be preserved, our present will be amplified, and our future will be secured. That is the legacy I'm leaving my four-year-old, this place, and the celebration of who we are unapologetically. It's a good day to be in Buffalo. Marv Levy was right. <laughs> uh, Next, I'm going to bring up a, a partner in government, and uh, I tip my hat to the work of, of truly any mayor, because being a mayor is difficult. Uh, as much as we can complain about my long haul to Albany every week, which is long and brutal, uh, the work of an executive is tough. There is a big city, in Bu Buffalo is a big, big city, with a lot of complexities and a lot of things that constantly need attention. In government, we really don't have the luxury of saying, well, I'll deal with that tomorrow. It'll figure itself out. But in government, we constantly have to be aware of the things that are happening, all of the things, all of the time. Uh, and that's why I, I give a, a large amount of respect to our mayor, who has sought fit to, to be a part of this work, uh, who has contributed on behalf of the city uh, quite a bit of money to this project. And, uh, and I know that Kaz will be calling you for more. So Byron Brown. <laughs> Thank you very much, Assemblyman Rivera. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. It's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here today. The groundbreaking of the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute is another day of great progress in the city of Buffalo. I want to congratulate the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute for your great work. I want to recognize Kaz Rodriguez and uh, the board of directors for doing an amazing job in bringing us to this day. And I want to say a, a special word about Kaz Rodriguez and his leadership lessons and his model of leadership. He is a leader that leads with love and great compassion. And like so many of my colleagues in government, I have heard from Kaz often <laughs> on this project. But you know what? I enjoy hearing from Kaz, and I tell him that I enjoy hearing from him. And so on a Monday, the phone will ring and the staff will say, it's Kaz Rodriguez on the line for you. Put him right through. On Wednesday, the phone will ring. <laughs> Kaz Rodriguez on the line for you. Put him right through. Kaz, your parents, you mentioned them, 
They would be so proud of you today. And that spirit, um, uh, that hardworking spirit that they instilled in you is certainly evident. The other thing about Kaz's leadership is that he draws people in and he works to develop the leaders of tomorrow, the Elsmeralda Sierras, the Donora Santoses, uh, the Kelly Hernandezes, and so many others that are on the board of the Hispanic Heritage Council. Our entire community, Kaz, uh, benefits from your leadership. Let's give him another round of applause. I want to thank our great governor for stopping a hurricane to be with us today. You know, the governor is doing a tremendous job in leading in the entire state of New York. And even with those awesome responsibilities, she never forgets about us here in upstate New York, in western New York, in Buffalo, New York. She is one of us and she constantly delivers for this community. And it was great having the governor here with us today to emphasize the critically important role that this project will play not only in West Buffalo, uh, but in the entire city of Buffalo. Another example of the real importance of this project is the fact that Bishop Angel Gautier came all the way from Puerto Rico to deliver the prayer today. Bishop, thank you for being with us. Now, uh, Secretary of State Rodriguez, I have to say this, Kaz uh, mentioned Mo Simbundu, uh, and Mo is kind of like a little brother to me, uh, but Mo called uh, the mayor's office today, I don't know where Mo is, um, and said, uh, I know that the mayor has a proclamation, but I don't want the mayor to deliver that proclamation today because our Secretary of State, Robert Rodriguez, has a proclamation, and the mayor cannot upstage the Secretary of State. So, uh, Secretary of State Rodriguez, I want you to know that Mo did his job today. <laughs> Finally, I want to, to recognize Niagara District Council Member and Majority Leader David Rivera. Um, my administration had the pleasure of working with Majority Leader Rivera. We're very pleased that the city uh, is able to contribute one million dollars to this project and also uh, provided the land that the Heritage Council uh, purchased to build this facility. And when Kaz and the Heritage Council didn't have any money, Kaz came to Majority uh, Rivera and I and said, we want that land. <laughs> and we said, no problem, Kaz, you got it. <laughs> so today is another great day of progress in our community. Uh, the Hispanic community in Buffalo is a large and growing community. It's a proud and vibrant community. These stories that will be told in the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute are critical stories because they are not just stories about the Hisp Hispanic community. They are stories about all of us and our entire community. And Buffalo would not be the community that it is today without our Hispanic community. So congratulations, Hispanic Heritage Council. Now it is my pleasure to introduce a strong leader, a colleague and a partner in government, uh, someone who works and fights 
every day for this community, our county executive, Mark Polenkar. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for those kind words. And, and I have to agree with the Assemblymember Rivera said. He worked in my administration. Being an executive is not easy. It, you're always on call. There are always issues to deal with. And I want to thank the Mayor for his strong leadership for our community. Uh, it is a wonderful day. You've heard from all the speakers. We've, uh, and, and, and I want to add just a little bit, because I know we've been here quite some time. But uh, to the Hispanic Heritage Council, uh, Annually, on September 15th, we're usually at the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library for the first day of Hispanic Heritage Month. And it's a tremendous event. This is better. <laughs> this is a lot better. Because when we're at the library, we get surrounded by 100 people or so. And I'm pleased to be joined, see we're joined by our library director, John Spears, and members of his team, as well as members of the Board of Trustees. And it's a great event for the few hundred people that are there. This facility will have an impact thousands and thousands for decades to come. It is a legacy project that everyone who was involved in it can be proud of. So to the entire board and membership of the Hispanic Heritage Council of Western New York, thank you. Of course, to my friend, Casimiro Rodriguez, you heard it. We're from Lackawanna. Don't ever underestimate anyone from Lackawanna. Now I'm going to give you the reason why. I'm going to tell you why. Because Lackawanna is a city. It's a proud city. It is the little brother of the city of Buffalo. We have a chip on our shoulder. And to show the world we can get things done, we do. And when Kaz first came to me with this project, I was like, the county will be there. The county will support it because I know you will see it through. You will get to the point where we are today in which we are celebrating this great groundbreaking because you have the commitment, you have the vision, you have the dream, and maybe you didn't have more than a few nickels in the Hispanic Heritage Council's pocket at that point, but we knew you were going to get it done. So on behalf of the people of Erie County, I just want to say it is it is my honor on behalf of myself and my colleagues who are here from Erie County, including the members of the Erie County Legislature, to have been an early supporter of this project and to have seen it through. Well, almost through, because as Mr. Secretary noted, we will all be back here for the ribbon cutting soon enough. And when that happens, this will be not just a legacy project that we can all be proud of for its impact on the future, but a transformational project, something that will make this community a strong, proud, vibrant community even stronger, and as you note, a destination for people to come to. I am It is our diversity, as Senator Ryan noted, that makes us strong. It is our diversity that makes us better. And together, we can celebrate the creation of an institute that we will all be proud of. To the members of the Hispanic Heritage Council, congratulations. This is an important day, a good day, and we will all be better for it. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce my partner in government, someone who means so much to this community for so long, council member and majority leader, David Rivera. Thank you very much, uh, county executive, all of our electeds, um, there are a few electeds that uh, just arrived. I just want to recognize colleagues on the Common Council, President Pro Temp Chris Scanlon. I want to recognize Mitch Nowakowski and Howard Johnson and our controller who just walked in briefly. I want to thank them because uh, I have gone to them seeking support. And whenever you seek support and they help you, there's a sense of gratitude that I have for what you have done. So thank you so much. This is the day that we have all anxiously awaiting. The Hispanic Heritage Institute will promote and educate people on the rich culture. Our children will come here and they will learn not to forget 
where they came from, the culture that they have. And there's a story behind all of this that I think that we all can take. Uh, from the very beginning when Pastor Gautier mentioned Nehemiah's, and everybody knows the story about Nehemiah's. There were detractors, people that said it can't be done, you can't build those walls in that time period. But they began to work and construct the walls. And those walls were reconstructed. There were many people that said this there's no, they can't sustain themselves. There isn't support in the community. But there was one thing that helped them overcome all of that. There was a sense of purpose. There was unity of purpose. They said, this is what we want to do. Then after that, there was unity of determination. They said, we have made a decision and this is what we're going to do. And then there was unity to overcome all of the obstacles that were in the way. There were many obstacles in the very beginning. And little by little, those obstacles were removed. But I want to thank those that helped remove the obstacles. We have Crystal People Stokes here and Cal Hasty. I will never forget what you did in Albany. Because we would pay close attention. Where are the donors? Where is the support coming from? And we want to thank you. And we will not forget our Secretary of State, our Assembly members, our Senators that were here, foundations, the funders. We thank you. We are so grateful to you. This is just the beginning. This groundbreaking is the first step to the grand opening that we're going to have here. I'm looking forward to bringing my children and grandchildren to this place. I'm looking forward to the work and the vibrancy that will come out of this building. So once again, thank you to the community at large. There's so many people to be thankful for. I just want to thank all of you and will always remember you. Thank you so much. Please welcome New York State Assembly Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes. Well, thank you all very much, whoever just did that introduction. I appreciate it. I had no idea it was going to happen, but um, I'm just going to give God all the glory, because obviously I'm supposed to be here at this moment. Yeah. I am I'm so excited about this. This speaks volumes of Buffalo. It speaks volumes of New York State. The rest of the world is engaged in culture wars, trying to figure out how we should be separated. But on the west side of Buffalo, in the great state of New York, we are celebrating culture. That's the way it's supposed to be. I, I look around the room and I see a lot of movers and shakers that make things happen in Buffalo and western New York. So let me thank you all individually and collectively for making this real vision come to a reality. I know you all have heard all day, all morning, about this man right here, Kaz Rodriguez. <laughs> but did you hear about Eunice Lewin? Something just like that. Did you hear about Maritza? Something just like Kaz. It must be in the DNA. It must be in the culture. I think it is, because my mother always raised us. My brothers and I, my father would disagree with her sometime, but she always won that one. There's no such word as can't. I want to say I was in the third grade, and the they started to teach those contracting words, and I was like, I wanted to correct the teacher. Like, no. My mother said there's no such thing as can't. But I also knew that she would come to school if they had called on me, so I didn't say anything. But the point is, is that there is something in our culture that will not allow us to accept a no when we know what we're doing is right. And I honor you. I honor you all for honoring your culture and moving this entire Buffalo community forward as you do it. Thank you so much, and God bless.